In the absence of a disturbing force, a body at rest tends to remain at rest. And a body in motion tends to remain in motion. Newton's laws of motion have provided the basis for an investigation into the problems associated with joining of space vehicles in flight, the retrieval of astronauts, and the effects of controlled tethering in space. As in the past, man will soon be required again to perform on-the-spot judgment and dexterity functions. On some missions, he will be functioning outside a space vehicle and in a hostile environment. Some of his tasks will involve the replenishment of supplies, perhaps film in the case of an orbiting telescope, or propellants for a propulsion system. His typical missions will also involve maintenance and repair of his and other space vehicles. As progress is made in space, man will be required to take part in the construction of orbital complexes such as space stations. Practically all manned extravehicular activity will entail astronaut motion relative to his space vehicle. There will of course be emergencies and the safe retrieval of persons and objects will be necessary. Man will gain his first experience in extravehicular functions with the Gemini. These experiences, however, will not be peculiar to the Gemini alone, but will be common to all future extravehicular work. Of prime concern during the program will be the methods of departure, the maneuver capabilities, and the safe return of the astronaut. In order to ensure the astronaut's safety during his maneuvers outside the relatively safe confines of the space vehicle, a tether line will be used. This prevents his drifting away, enables recovery in the event of an emergency due to his own errors or equipment malfunction, and affords a sense of well-being. The major problem associated with a safe return under these conditions involves the astronaut's velocity relative to the spacecraft and the corresponding angular momentum. In an Earth-centered coordinate system, there is still system angular velocity present, even if the astronaut maneuvered himself so that there appeared to be no relative motion between the spacecraft and himself. This is apparent when the spacecraft astronaut system is viewed in an inertial reference frame. Normally, the astronaut would return to the spacecraft in a manner similar to his departure, using the propulsion unit to check any angular velocities. However, a malfunction of the astronaut's propulsion unit could give rise to undesirable system angular velocity. In the event of a propulsion unit malfunction, or the incapacitation of the astronaut, the normal return technique would be impossible. For this reason, a physical link or tether line from the astronaut to the spacecraft is required. A flexible tether line is the simplest form of a physical connection. 
It is a popular misconception that it is a simple matter to retrieve an astronaut merely by reeling in the tether line. Any system possessing angular velocity also possesses a quantity known as angular momentum. This quantity remains unchanged in the absence of an external torque, regardless of any manipulation internal to the system. As the retrieval is attempted by shortening the tether line, an increase of angular velocities and tether line tensions results. The rapid increase in tensions results in extreme loads on the astronaut. For most situations, the retrieval attempt would fail. This effect is due to the conservation of angular momentum. This can be visualized by a whirling weight on the end of a string. Force is measured by connecting a scale to a pulley and taking up the string on a reel. As the weight is pulled in halfway, the angular velocity increases to four times its original value. The original force has been increased by a factor of eight. Upon reducing the tether length to one-fourth its original value, the velocity increases to 16. The corresponding force is now 64 times the original. As the weight is drawn progressively toward the center, the angular velocity increases in proportion to the square of the tether length reduction. The force in the line increases in proportion to the cube of that reduction. The major concern in such a retrieval system, then, is to dispose of the excess angular momentum. One technique to dispose of momentum is by an operational propulsion system. This also can be accomplished by providing the astronaut with an auxiliary thruster, such as a handheld device. But due to the astronaut's inability to orient the thrust accurately through his center of mass, such a simplified propulsion scheme could be difficult to handle. During these investigations, a safe and efficient retrieval approach was evolved. Analytical techniques indicated the most promising approach to be one based upon the redistribution of the system angular momentum. During tether line retrieval, a deployable mass, or a portion of the astronaut's spent equipment, is released on a secondary tether. The release can be actuated remotely, by the astronaut, or by a force sensor located at the astronaut. Now, as the astronaut is drawn toward the spacecraft, the deployed mass assumes a portion of the system angular momentum. This permits the retrieval operation to proceed within both human and mechanical limits. Once the astronaut arrives safely at the spacecraft, the deployed mass is released from the system, along with the majority of the undesirable angular momentum. In general, controlled tethering equipment can be considered to consist of three basic units. A tether line controller module, the tether line proper with its associated attachments, and a deployable anchor mass. The controller module located within the space vehicle allows either automatic or manual control over the tether line during the entire course of an extravehicular excursion. During these operations, the tether provides positive information on the position and velocity of the tethered body. This information can be used during extravehicular activity or recorded for subsequent use. The tether line near the astronaut is shrouded by a section that serves as an attachment to the spacesuit. It protects the suit against abrasion, provides for shock absorption, and controller cutoff. When the requirement arises to retrieve the astronaut, a portion of his equipment is deployed on a secondary tether to serve as a drag mass. During the controlled tethering investigations, 
several techniques were studied to determine the optimum approach. The added launch weight is that required for a single retrieval. Weight is plotted as a function of astronaut separation distance for a velocity of three miles per hour. One of the obvious methods to rescue a distressed astronaut is to propel the space vehicle to him. This requires moving a heavy object about in space and is therefore expensive in regard to propellant consumed. The second technique involves sending a propulsion unit to the disabled astronaut and operating it remotely. This requires an attitude control system and becomes quite complex and therefore expensive. The third retrieval technique uses control tethering with an anchor mass. To accomplish the same retrieval, this method is the least expensive in terms of weight, complexity, and cost. Consider an astronaut at a distance of 1,000 feet from an Apollo spacecraft. Assume he has acquired a velocity of 3 miles per hour at the end of his tether and cannot alter it. He can be rescued with a weight cost of 200 pounds by moving the spacecraft to him. The weight cost of a remotely operated propulsion unit would be 100 pounds. By using the control tethering retrieval with an anchor mass, the weight cost is reduced to 50 pounds. Therefore, this technique is recommended. Prior to development of operational hardware, certain tests and simulations will be conducted. One phase of development could involve small-scale simulation. Insight into the characteristics of a full-scale system can be gained by this approach. Developmental tests of full-scale components can be conducted by employing a realistic ground-based test bed. Here, mechanical and human interrelations will be solved. In addition to simulations, certain environmental evaluation of system components must be conducted. Vacuum chamber testing is typical of this evaluation. Control tethering technology and equipment developed for manned extravehicular operations is directly applicable to other missions. One such mission is the deployment and retrieval of a piece of equipment to perform an experiment or collect information at a distance from the space vehicle. This technique permits direct control to be exercised over the separation distance, offers closed communications with the deployed equipment, and allows recovery following the activity. Control tethering also gives promise of simplifying manned propulsion systems. This simplification results from the stabilization of the system by the tether line. More economic fuel usage is possible, since outward radial velocity can be arrested and a velocity reversal initiated by the tether. Certain operations in space may call for remote inspection or connection to nearby objects. Control tethering can be used to advantage to affect a connection and subsequent manipulation, such as a mating operation. This application permits precise control over the operation with unsophisticated equipment. The problem of mating or joining two or more objects in space is certain to occur with increasing frequency. This task can be approached with three basically different concepts. The concepts differ in terms of cost, weight, and complexity. The more costly, complex concept is the one where the incoming module that is to be assembled is provided with guidance, propulsion, and control. This approach is essentially repeated with each arriving module and the subsequent assembly process. This requires a duplication of equipment. A second concept uses the propulsion, guidance, and control capacity repeatedly 
in the form of a space tug. As incoming modules enter the capture zone of the tug, it transports them into place. This approach reduces duplication, but fuel costs may be high. A third concept involves the use of control tethering to accomplish the mating task. This approach minimizes weight and complexity, and therefore overall costs. As components enter the capture zone, a connection is made with the tether by a remotely controlled probe, or an astronaut. Then the assembly operation is carried out by the control tether. A propulsion system probably will be required to correct angular velocity buildup during the docking process. This approach appears to offer many advantages in terms of overall system efficiency and reliability. In summary, manned extravehicular activity can capitalize upon control tethering by providing an efficient method of retrieval in case of human or equipment failure. Control tethering techniques also give promise of simplifying propulsion systems design. The tethering system that is developed for manned activity can also be utilized for deployment of equipment to remote distances for experimental or information gathering purposes. Control tethering offers weight and cost advantages over other techniques in space assembly and construction. The technology previously developed will be directly applicable to these tasks. NASA plans to continue work on tethering technology. Provision of operational hardware requires ground-based simulation and testing, a hardware development program, and for final evaluation, an actual flight test phase. By this procedure, efficient and reliable control tethering equipment can be supplied to meet the demands of the future.